Okay, I got asked to make a pure Spore Druid build, so here we go. This will be levels 1 to 12 of Spore Druid. Now, your race does not matter, but this will be a very good healer, summoner, support type character. Very, very strong. So, obviously start of our Druid. Now, for your cantrips, we're going to take Shillelagh, and we're going to take Thorn Whip. Shillelagh is really good, because you can basically add it onto a staff or a club, and instead of using like strength, it will use your spellcasting ability for attack rolls, which in this case would be wizard. And it also deals 11 to up to 11 damage, which is really, really good for a simple staff. For your ability points, I would leave it something akin to this. So 10 in strength, 14 dex, 16 constitution, 8 intelligence, 16 wisdom, and 10 charisma. And when it comes to your skill proficiencies, as always, take whatever you feel like. There is no min-maxing here. Take whatever you feel like works best for your character, whether it's your main character or a companion. Okay, at Druid level 2 we unlock our specialisations, and this brings us to Circle of Sports. Now at level 2 you have access to Wild Shape if you wish to use this, but more important we get Bone Chill, and Symbiotic Entity and Halo of Spores. Symbiotic Entity basically gives you an additional 1-6 to six necrotic damage while you have this activated, and 8 temporary hit points, and it uses one of your wild shape charges. This in turn affects Halo of Spores. Now, this is a move you can use on your turn, and it will use up your reaction you'd have that round. Which means if you wish to do this, you could do your action, your bonus action, and your reaction all on your turn. So really, really good, and it's a nice little 1 to 4 damage, doubled with Symbiotic Entity. For your spells, I would take Cure Wounds, and I'll take Healing Word, because as I said, you will be able to use this as a healer type character. I would take Fairy Fire, because it's a very good ability to just give you advantage. Thunder Wave, because as always, one of my favourite spells in the game. And Long Strider. Okay, at Druid level 3, we have access to one more spell. And for this, I would come in here, and I would take Spike Growth. So shape a piece of ground into hard spikes. Movement is halved, and creatures walking on the spikes take 2 to 8 piercing damage. Now this is a concentration spell, but it does last for 100 turns. So if something's only lasted for like 10 turns or so, this is really good, it will last for 100 turns. And if you can throw this up, and then thunder wave people backwards onto it, so they have to walk through it again, you can continuously just deal damage this way. Okay, Druid level 4, now the main benefit of this is we get access to a feat. For a cantrip, let's just take Poison Spray. And we're going to take the ASI improvement and obviously bump our Wisdom up to 18. This again gives us another spell we can take, and for this one we're going to take Hold Person. So, this is a concentration spell, lasts for 10 rounds, and if successful, it will hold the character still, and any hit on this character will be a critical hit. Really, really powerful. Okay, Druid level 5, we have more access to spells, and for this one we are going to take Plant Growth. So, make weeds burst on the ground and smother the area. Creatures moving through the weeds have their movement speed quartered. Now this isn't concentration, please bear that in mind. So you can just throw this up and you don't have to concentrate on it. Really good spell for slowing people down. And if you have ranged characters like an archer or a sorcerer or a wizard that can throw magic or arrows or whatever at these people, you can really chip away at them before they've had time to get to your melee characters and deal some damage. I would also take Cool Lightning, 3 to 30 damage and its concentration. And you can recast it without expending a spell slot as long as you remain concentrated on the spell. Really good way of extending out a damage dealing spell and doing as much damage as possible. Okay, Druid level 6 and the benefit of this part is Fungal Infestation. So you can raise a zombie from a corpse. So it's pretty much like Animate Dead, but it's the Druid version of it. And instead of using a spell slot, this will use a Fungal Infestation charge which is different from your wild shape charges, which affect your symbiotic entity. So bear that in mind. For a spell, I would come back with Moonbeam, which is a level 2 spell. Call down a beam of light that damages any creatures that enter the beam. This is 2 to 20, it lasts for 10 turns, and is another good way of continuously dealing damage. You will have noticed that we are spreading our damage across, because I want us to be a very versatile. A little bit of lightning, some fire, some radiant, as much as we can really fester. Okay, we are now Druid level 7, give us access to a higher level spell, and for this one, Conjure Woodland Being. As always, this summons a Dryad. 
Now Dryads are really good because not only do they have Shillelagh, they can also entangle enemies when they hit them, and they can summon a Woodwode, which means for one spell you can get two summons, and you don't have to cast this in combat for it to last. Druid level 8, now obviously we have another spell slot available, but we also get another feat, which we'll use to bump our wisdom up because this is our spell casting ability. And for a spell here, we're going to take Conjure Minor Elemental because we're going to have another summon on the battlefield. So now we're up to three, including the Dryad and the Woodwoad, as well as your Fungal Infestations. Druid level nine, very high powerful spells now. We are going to take Mass Cure Wounds to add to our healing ability. And we're going to take Insect Plague because this is a really good concentration spell. If you can throw this up with a plant growth on the bottom to slow people down and then have them walk through Insect Plague, you can deal an immense amount of damage every turn. Okay, Druid level 10. This allows us to do spreading spores, but it only works if you have Symbiotic Entity available. So please bear that in mind. It also gives us another cantrip, so let's just take Guidance. And we get another spell, and for this one, Conjure Elemental. Now previously, we took Conjure Minor Elemental. Conjure Minor Elemental and Conjure Elemental will stack. So you can have these two summons at the same time. Okay, Druid level 11. We now have access to six level spells. And to begin with, we are going to take Heal. And finally, Druid level 12. We will once again take the SI to keep our constitution as high as possible. And for a spell, we're going to take Wall of Thorns. Create a wall of palatable twisted thorns surrounded by entangling vines. Creatures can move through the wall, but they take 7 to 56 damage per turn, and their movement is quartered, and it lasts for 60 turns. Really, really powerful. Okay, so that is our build from level 1 to 12 done, so let's look at some equipment. To start with, I really like the Harper Sacred Striker. Now granted, there probably are better weapons you can use here, but I like this for two reasons. Number one, we can cast Spiritual Weapon, which means we have another summon on the battlefield. And we can cast um, Shillelagh on this, and it will use our spell casting ability instead of our strength. When it comes to a headband, I really like the circlet of Sonic Revenge. So when you succeed a saving throw, the foe that calls the throw takes 1 to 4 psychic damage. For a cloak, I really like the Flesh Melter Cloak, because it plays into the druidness of it. So whenever a creature deals melee damage to the wearer, the creature takes 1 to 4 acid damage. For boots, the Disingrating Night Walkers, just because it allows you to not be in webbed, entangled, or ensnared, and not slip on grease or ice. And more importantly, it gives you access to Misty Step, which is still one of the greatest spells in the game for mobility and getting yourself out of danger. For gloves, I really like the Icarus Gloves, so when, you do, when the Weary deals acid damage, they also inflict noxious fumes upon the target, and I've spoken about this before in a few previous videos. Now, for rings and an amulet, you can really take whatever you fancy. The only one I would recommend is the Keepsake Ring, and this allows you to cast Dominate Beast, which I really think does tie into that Druid ability. Now, Dominate Beast is a really good spell. Make a beast fight alongside you. Every time the beast takes damage, it makes a Wisdom saving throw against you. So if you can use this and cast on a Wolf or something that someone has, and switch them onto your team, it's essentially like another summon for as long as they fail their saving throw. And finally, the Armor of the Spore Keeper. This armor is made for a spore druid. So, gain a plus one bonus to spell save DC when dealing necrotic damage, and deal an additional one necrotic damage. It's not too bad, one damage isn't anything to write home about. But more importantly, spore sacks. While imbued with symbiotic entity, you can spread bibrin spores, tismic spores, and haste spores, and this is what makes it so powerful. I will show you this in the combat tutorial, but essentially this armor really turns a druid a spore druid from being really good to phenomenal so let's go find some combat and i'll show you what to do okay so before we find any sort of combat we have just come out of the camp so this is what you would need to do cast symbiotic entity so you see we have 48 temporary hit points at highest level which is insane we now have almost 150 hit points that's the highest on the squad I have here. And if you look at the bottom, it has used the wild shape charge, not the fungal infestation, like I said. Next up, what you would like to do is come into this and summon your woodland being. So, summon them here. 
and we have our dryad. Now alongside the dryad, as I said, they can summon a Woodwode with the Fallen Lover ability. So now with one third level spell, we have two summons. If we go back to our druid, we can come in here. If I remember my spells, here we go. And we can now summon a minor elemental. And you can pick whatever you want. We will take a mud mint and we'll cast it at the lowest level just to show. And there we go. Once it finally loads, there we go. And after doing this, we can come back in with a Conjure Elemental. And at the highest level, you are able to cast Meridians. So let's just take a... we'll take a Fire one. Just to spread our abilities around. Just like that. And now as you can see, we spent three spell slots. And we have a full army, spent one of our wild charge shapes, and we have 50 almost extra hit points. Really powerful stuff. We can also pair this with Animate Dead. So let's just take some normal zombies, and we'll create three of them with a fourth level spell slot. So we'll create that one, we need to turn the camera a little bit. This one, and this one. And as you can see, it stacks. And we have no more corpses, but we still have four fungal infestation charges, as you can see below, which means we can get another four summons with the corpses. Now, let's pick this fight, because why not? There we go. Your violence hasn't gone unnoticed. It's about to be returned in kind. Okay, and let's play this fight out and see just how powerful it is. Now, obviously we do have a really good rogue. You can do stuff like that, which always helps. And we should do a dread ambush uh, to the gentleman up here. There we go. Now it's already our Fire Meridian's turn, and what's really good is these things can fly. So, you can really maneuver yourself around the battlefield with these guys, and they hit very hard. Just like that. They also have a bunch of abilities, like they can teleport, they can do Cinder Swipes, a lot of good stuff. And the whole point of this build, once again, as I said, is to control the battlefield. Now, they even have Hellish Rebuke, which means you can do damage to people on the other side. Um, so this allows us to basically tank with all these characters and really divert the enemy's um, attention away from our people. Unfortunately for Shadow Up, it isn't quite working for her, but it is now our turn. Now, we have a bunch of spells we can do. As I said before, cast Shillelagh. And now we use our spell casting ability for our shillelagh instead of our strength, so we don't need to buff our strength. And as stated, we do still have a bunch of spells here we can do. One of the big ones, as I said, is Cloud Kill. Very, very good damage dealing spell. If we were to just put this over here, you'll see just how much damage this does. 26 damage. And there's just have to run through this. And what you can do is you can hold the concentration on this and just hide in the background. And once again, we do still have Halo of Spores because it is a reaction. So if we were to cast this and we'll just select this guy here. Another seven easy damage. And there you go, even with a save, 14 damage that was. Now the Dryad. As long as they hit, they will entangle if the save has failed. Now you see, unfortunately the save was failed, but 12 damage still, and you can strengthen their shillelagh. Like such. Now, with your hero, we'll just skip her turn. Because I really want to show how this build will work if you don't use it too much. Now, if we come over here with our Mud Mints, you'll see... They can do some serious damage, and they can also fly, which is very good. Now, they're not the biggest damage dealers, but they can still pick up our enemies. This. And this is before we've even got to our Woodwode and our zombies. So our Woodwode will just sort of get into the fight a bit more, because he's stuck at the back. And now it is our lovely zombies' turn, and because we have summoned these, we can actually attack with them. 
So let's try and get them into the fight a little bit. We'll bring you over here. This zombie will bring over here. And, as you just saw, they are immune to cloud kill. So if you can trap people in cloud kill, you can send your animated dead zombies into the cloud kill to hit them really hard while they take poison damage. And we'll just move this one over here. Like such. Alright, it's back to our rogues. We're going to end that turn. And we'll once again just continue with our characters. Now, they have a bunch of abilities, as you can see here. If we were to do Cinder Swipes or Scorching Strike, there you go, we have given them the burning status for two turns. Alright, we're now down to Runt. And unfortunately, ensnaring people isn't ideal. But we have lost our concentration, which is okay, because that is what I wanted to do anyway, because I was going to break the concentration to cast something else. And you can just see the whole army we have on the battlefield here. Now we're going to start with a very simple attack. I would like to come in here. In fact, can we reach any of them? Can we reach you? Let's try and come over here and see if we can smack you with my staff. Here we go. So you'll see how much a normal staff attack does. Or not, because we missed. Okay, it is now the Dryad, so let's see if we can ensnare again. There you go, 26 damage, broken concentration, and they are now ensnared. Now, as you can see, Jahiran's stuff is losing a lot of health, which is okay, that's what we wanted. There we go, that's fine. Our Mud Mints can still come in, this is now two critical hits that has made. And once again, another 10 damage. Unfortunately, Shadow Hearts can't seem to hit anyone. Oh, she can come around here. There we go. Awesome. Now, a lovely Woodward cannot seem to swing at anyone because he is stuck. But they do hit very hard. There we go. Absolutely walloped him, and he is now dead. And that leaves us our lovely zombies who we can use to chase down this lost gentleman. In fact, we can't because we are in a choke point, which is okay. It means we can just come in here and do another critical hit. Obviously, the more attacks you can do, the more chance you have of getting a critical hit because enemies are stuck and there's more characters on the battlefield. And because he did get hit, even though the zombie didn't kill him, we killed him, you still get to raise a zombie because it was on the last turn. And your Meridian can obviously just chase people down from above. Still burning them. Now, unfortunately, the Murdran did just get thrown off the edge with the Roaring Arrow. Not ideal, but if that was an actual companion up there, you've got bigger issues. The fact that it was a summon and we can still resummon says everything. And this is what is really good. You can ensnare people so they can't do as much damage. You can keep them stuck. You can smack them really hard. And you have such an army that it's impossible not to do mass damage. Now you see we have another Woodward. And we can just start chasing down this last enemy. Just like that. Another Mud Mint. So obviously we can send them to start chasing down enemies as well. And this is again another thing that can fly. Which is really helpful in controlling the battlefield and stopping people having the advantage of being able to just attack you from anywhere. You see, we are now swarming this enemy on the other side of where everyone is. Fight. Let's go. Now, have we got space to jump in here? We do not, sadly. So what we can do is just continuously come over here. And I wonder if we can. We can't, not at the moment. But what we can do is still chase down the enemy. I wonder 
And this build is really good at just, you swarm people, essentially. And you just overrun the battlefield. Doing attacks. Keep going. And there you go, we did 12 damage with our staff, thanks to our spellcasting ability. And we still have access to our bonus actions. So we can do a Misty Step or whatever. The other thing we have is Haste Spores. So for example, if we were to throw this up here, you can now see that not only are our main characters hasted, but also our summons are hasted, which is very powerful. If you can throw this up and then give your summons haste so they can do two attacks per round, you really are laughing. You will do so much damage. For example, we can now come up here with Shadow Heart, strike once, and strike again. All thanks to a haste, and it works with your summons. Now, it does only last for a turn because you have used haste within the um, spore, unlike the potion or the haste spell. But even still, really, really powerful. You can essentially have an army of people hasted. See, if I run to here, I am now hasted, which means I can once again come in here and take a shot. So even though I didn't have the ability to be hasted after my first attack, you can run in and then become hasted afterwards. And you can pretty much see this is the end of the fight. And you can continuously run into haste spores because they will last until you long rest. So very, very good. And as you can see, we still have all these spell slots available. And we still have the ability to heal. So we could do a fifth level cure wounds if we wanted to on Jahira. Unfortunately, we're stuck. There we go. We come in here and do a heal word, let's say, on oh, the camera. Never mind. But you could heal if you choose to. What's also really good for this is, as I said before, we still have the ability, when I can see it, where is it? Where's my fungal infestation? Here it is, a fungal infestation. We still have the ability to raise more corpses. And continually build up our army. So if you can find yourself a small fight, you can essentially army build from the moment you leave camp all the way until they either die or until you need to long rest again. And you can just keep doing this because we still have two more charges. So let's raise this one finally. Just like this. And without using any healing spells during the fight, without really using our companions too much, we now have an army following us. So that is my Spore Druid build, very good versatile build, lots of damage dealing, an army builder, and a healer, and it's phenomenal. If you have enjoyed, please drop the episode a like, it helps me amazingly. Let me know what you're changing in the comments below, if there's anything you'd add, what equipment you'll change, what spells you'll change. If you're new and you're not subscribed, you'd like to, that'd also be amazing, and hopefully, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys!